I've been interested in UNIDO for a very long time. I spent a good part of my UN career in the field, and from there I was able to see UNIDO at work. But specifically, in terms of the book, I think that UNIDO presents a very interesting case study of an organization which began quite small as a program right back in the, the late 1940s, then developed into a unit, and then a, then a division, and then an organization under UN auspices, and then finally, uh, status of specialized agency. So that evolution of UNIDO from program to specialized agency, I think, was, was of great interest. Um, and I was writing for a series for Routledge on um, international institutions, and it seemed to me that UNIDO, from what I knew about it and from what I had observed about its evolution, I thought it presented a very interesting case study. I was able to draw on a lot of material which UNIDO itself had produced. I mean, I have to say that the kind of publications that UNIDO puts out are of great interest, not just the promotional ones, but much more especially the, um, the technical publications that it, that it puts out. So I was able to draw on a lot of material which UNIDO itself had. There was also uh, a lot of evaluation, a uh, number of evaluation reports which I could use. These were, these were especially useful and interesting. And then there are a number of books have been written on UNIDO, so there was, there was there was plenty of material to go on, but as I say, I also was able to draw on the sort of experience I'd, I'd had working with UNIDO. So it was not unfamiliar territory by any means. I think UNIDO is highly relevant. It has a special place in this large family of UN organizations because it works closely with the private sector at the cutting edge. In other words, the private manufacturing sector in particular. And I think that's really important. I think the, 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 the kind of unique role that, that, that UNIDO can play is in being a bridge between the UN and, and the private sector. So. Yes, and I think, uh, I think that the, the whole environment agenda makes the importance of UNIDO even greater. Yes, in the first case it is, as I mentioned, that bridge with the private sector. It works with enterprises, public sector, sometimes under state control as well, but it works with productive enterprises and it's, to that extent, it's, it's somewhat unique within the system. So that would be my first point. Um, my second point is that it has a great opportunity to address a very pressing global problem, which is, of course, climate change and the concerns that the world has about emissions um, particularly coming from, uh, from the productive sector. So that is a second uh, very unique aspect of, of UNIDO. And the third one is, is perhaps one that I've already mentioned. I think the, the, the institutional evolution of UNIDO is of interest and is instructive for, for the rest of the system as well. I see the future of UNIDO coming around a key word, and that is quality. And I would say that quality should be defined in three ways. I think UNIDO has a very strong mandate to address quality from the product point of view. To the extent that UNIDO can assist countries to produce goods which can be traded, particularly which can be traded internationally, uh, up to a standard which is internationally acceptable. I think that, that process of, of, of quality around product is very, very important for UNIDO. So that's the first thing. The second aspect of quality is 
is process quality. In other words, this is a time, because of the concerns of the environment, climate change, the, uh, the need for, for individual enterprises to find that triple bottom line of you know, social, economic and environment, they are looking for ways to improve and um, clean their production processes in the interests of the wider climate change and other environmental concerns. So what, what UNIDO can do to help with cleaner production, I think, is another very, very important part of its mandate. And the third aspect of quality that I would uh, mention is, is quality of development. And I think this is where UNIDO's role in trying to guide countries in their industrial policy processes is, is, is very important. How is it that industry, in other words, which is an engine of development and growth, how can industry be helped to respond to the main development priorities? That is to say, uh, whether it's regional development or uh, inclusiveness, bringing more women into, into the productive sector, um, addressing the kind of um, production that the country is going to need and that can be, can be traded uh, profitably on the, on the world market. So those are the three things. Quality in product, quality in process, and quality in development. And that, I think, is where the core mandate of, of UNIDO really belongs.